Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion and as I promised, I will continue in this video to discuss about diffusivity coefficient and in the case of the pore diffusivity. So what happens when we have diffusion in porous material? This is very common in industry as well. It has many different applications, especially for gas separation. If you have a contaminated gas, you put it in an equipment that contains some packing material, a very porous uh, material. And as a consequence of diffusivity, the, some of the components included in the contaminated gas will be separated. So at the exit, we will have a clean gas getting out of this equipment. And of course, the contaminants will get, we will also get the contaminants, but as you can see, the contaminants will be separated from the main uh, gas that you want to purify or you want to clean. And again, this is very, very common um, and, and it has many different applications. That's why it's important that we understand very well what will be the equations that we have to use in this case to determine the value of the pore diffusivity. We, uh, we're gonna assume that there are two different modes of pore diffusivity. One is called the Nansen diffusion in gases, and I'll explain you in a minute uh, what, I, what I mean by that. And the second uh, mode is when we have uh, liquid solvent. Uh, so in this case, we call the enduring diffusion of solutes in pores which are filled with a liquid solvent. We're going to assume in other cases that we have cylindrical cores, although I will, um, I will explain to you in a few minutes what can we do to, um, when, when there is no cylindrical pore, so how can we deal with that? So the Nansen diffusion for gases, in the case of gases, oh, we're gonna consider um, that uh, the pure Nansen diffusion is when a particle or uh, a molecular A goes through the pore and it has some interaction with the with the ball with the walls. Okay, so this uh, measure here, this parameter here, the diameter of the pore is very important. There is another mode. It's a pure molecular diffusion. Okay, and in this case, the di the diameter of the pore is not that important when we have a pore that is sufficiently large, the uh, molecular A wouldn't have any kind of interaction with the, with the walls. If there is diffusion, is purely related to how the element A will diffuse through the element B. But again, because of the diameter of the pore is significantly, significantly large, there is no interaction, there is no effect on how this particular can uh, be affected by the fact that we are in a pore, in a very dimension, in a very small cylinder. In reality, what we normally have is a mixture between the Nansen diffusion and the molecular diffusion. So sometimes the molecular A will hit the pore wall and there will be therefore an effect on the diffusivity, and some of the times the interaction between the molecular A and the molecular B will be the one determining the value of the diffusion coefficient. So as I mentioned, this can be the general case when we have a mixture between the Nansen diffusion and molecular diffusion. If we have the diameter of the pore is very, very small, we can make the assumption that the Nansen diffusion is the one that will be predominant. And therefore, we will only have to apply the Nansen diffusion equation. But this, is, this only happens when the diameter of the pore is very, very small. It's smaller than the mean free pass, um, uh, this element that we can also find in some tables, okay? And this Nansen diffusion only applies to gases. If we have liquid, we don't have to worry about the Nansen diffusion because usually, well, 
you know, gases have more freedom to move. And this effect of heating the, 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 the walls will be more noticeable in the case of gases than liquids. Okay, so let's see how we can define this Nansen diffusion. We have, um, from the kinetic theory of gases, we can study how, if we only have one element A in a porous material, how will be this diffusion? Just considering the effect of the pore. And there is an equation here that you can use that comes from the kinetic theory of gases. How we got this expression here is out of the scope of this course because this is something that you study in the momentum transfer. Okay, in the case of uh, when we study porosity, we're going to replace the mean free path length by the diameter of the pore, and therefore this expression here will be transport, transformed into the Nansen diffusion is equal to the diameter of the pore over 3 times this constant here, well, the temperature is not constant, but the rest of the elements here, these are constants. Uh, so we have the Boltzmann constant here. We have the Avogadro's number here. Well, pi, eight, those are constant as well. And this is the molecular weight. So if you do the calculations, if you group all the different constants, we can say that the Nansen diffusion is equal to this equation here, which is 4,850 times the diameter of the pore, square root of the temperature and the molecular weight of the element. This equation here is usually uh, applied when we have, as I mentioned, very small diameter of the pore. Otherwise, if the pore is sufficiently large, we won't see the Nansen effect, okay? And also when we have low pressure, because when the pressure is elevated, the particle go, will go through the pore without many interaction, and therefore the Nansen diffusion will be not that significant. Okay, so this is the case when we have Nansen diffusion only, pure Nansen diffusion. Okay, so what will be the general case when we have Nansen diffusion and when we have, let's say, regular molecular diffusion? This is something that uh, this diffusion coefficient, when we consider general case, when we consider both contribution, um, can be calculated as a function of the contribution of the molecular diffusion and the contribution of the Nansen diffusion. In the case of the Nansen diffusion, we will have to determine the value of the diffusivity of the Nansen diffusion that we can calculate using this previous equation, okay, this one that we just discussed a couple of minutes ago. And the contribution of the molecular diffusion is defined as a function of a parameter alpha, which is a function as well of the molar flux of the element B and the molar flux of the element A. Okay, so you will have to know the values of the molar flux of the element A and B. You will need to multiply alpha by the molar fraction of the element A and divide this by the uh, value of the molecular diffusion coefficient, let's say the, re the regular diffusion coefficient of the element A through B. It's not very uncommon to assume that the element A is dilute or the concentration is very small, or when we have counter diffusion, when the molar flux of the element A is the same but opposite direction of the molar flux of the element B. In those cases, we can uh, say that this ratio here will be equal to minus one, okay, and therefore alpha will be equal to zero. Okay. If we go back to the expression, the general expression, this term here will disappear. And as a function, as a result, sorry, we will have a relationship between the diffusivity in the general case 
as a function of the regular molecular diffusion coefficients and the Nansen diffusion coefficient. Okay, so you can use this equation to calculate the um, diffusivity of the element A when we have a porous material. One important aspect is that the diffusivity of the element A through this pore is not the same as the diffusivity of the element B. So you will have to calculate the diffusivity of the element B using these same equations. Okay, okay. Now, the, the, the last case in the case of gases. What if we don't have cylindrical pores? I mentioned that one of the assumptions that we're gonna take is that for all the equations, we're gonna assume that it's, uh, the pores are cylindrical. What if they are not cylindrical? Well, then we have to consider a new term, a new concept that is tortuosity, or I normally use porosity or void fraction. This porosity is a relationship between the volume occupied by the pores over the total volume. Okay, so it will give you an indication of how uh, this, how this material is, is more porous or less porous. What's the relationship between the diffusivity or the diffusion coefficient when, when, when we don't have cylindrical pores? Well, this is the term that we're looking for. So is this new coefficient, considering non-cylindrical pores, is equal to the porosity, power to two, over the uh, diffusion coefficient considering cylindrical pores. Okay? Okay, let's move now to the case when we have liquid. The previous equations uh, were for the case of gases, and now we have a porous material which is filled with a solvent which is liquid. In this case, the diffusion coefficient of the element A um, is defined as a function of the, let's say, the regular molecular diffusion coefficient of A through B. And this ratio is a function of two functions, okay, F1 and F2. F1 is the static partition coefficient, and F2 is the hydrodynamic hindrance coefficient. And in both cases, these two functions, F1 and F2, depends on this parameter here. This parameter here is defined as the ratio between the diameter of the particle or the solute divided by the diameter of the pore, okay? So usually, well, you have to have the information about the different diameters. Um, once you have the number, you plug in and you calculate F1 and F2, okay, and with that, and since you know as well the regular molecular diffusion coefficient, you should be able to calculate this parameter, this molecular diffusion coefficient, when we have a porous material which is filled with a liquid. We're going to see that, especially in the case of membranes, um, uh, it's very common as well to have this condition when the diameter of the particle is larger than diameter of the pore. And in this case, we say that we are separating by exclusion, okay? So if you have, uh, if, if there is an indication that the solute, uh, that the uh, separation is, um, is being done by exclusion, that means that this parameter is uh, larger or equal to one, actually, if, this sigma is equal to one, that will be the limit when we consider exclusion or no exclusion, okay? And I think there is an example about this. So you should be able to see it more, well, clear once we go over the example. Okay. The last case, when we have solids. Well, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Diffusion in solids is not that important. I mean, it is, depending on the application, but it's not that common. When you have um, uh, absorption, for example, with D, uh, with D, okay? When you have a solid and it absorbs some kind of component, you have diffusion in solids. You can determine the value of the diffusion coefficient as a 
as a function of a constant and the activation energy, this thermodynamic constant and the absolute temperature in the system. So uh, again, in this course, we're not gonna go over diffusion in solids in, in detail, just to let you know that there is an equation that you can use, okay? Okay, so in summary, um, we know already about mass transport that there are two modes of mass transfer. One is molecular diffusion and the second one is convective. For molecular diffusion, for molecular diffusion only, okay, we can use the fixed rate equation. And in this equation, there is a parameter, a very important parameter, which is the diffusion coefficient that we need to determine, either using the tables in the appendix J or using some of the equations, the empirical equations that I went over in the videos. Okay, I think that's all. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.